In this video, we're going to take an in-depth look at the FlexFire 4 from Wicked Technologies. If you're interested, keep watching. Before we begin, I want to point out that the FlexFire 4 was sent to me by Wicca Technologies for testing and review, and I did not pay for the stove. I also want to point out that I'm receiving no compensation and no sponsorship for doing this video. Okay, so this will be the second in a three-part series reviewing the three offerings from Wicked Technologies. So what I'd like to do is take you down to the tabletop, we'll assemble the FlexFire 4, I'll go, go over its specifications, and then we'll talk about how it can be used with a variety of fuels, and then of course we'll get outdoors and do some testing. When you receive the FlexFire 4 from Wicca Technologies in Germany, you're going to also receive this manual with it. And the manual is actually very well done. It, of course, describes the assembly of the stove and the safe operation of the stove, but it also shows you a number of the accessories that are available for the stove. And it does so with some very clear pictures and instructions. So let's put that aside. Now, the stove arrives in a cotton sack. This is pretty much identical in many ways to the light fire cotton sack. It's a simple, heavy duty cotton, well constructed, fold over envelope design. But there's a unique feature to this, which I'll show you in one second. So let's take the components of the stove out. I'm gonna put them aside only for one second to show you more about the sack. Now, you'll notice that there are two strips of Velcro running down the front of the envelope, and that is done so that you can use this for the FlexFire 4, fold it over like this, or can be used for the FlexFire 6 and closing it like this. Now the envelope is much bigger because the components for the FlexFire 6 are of course bigger and need a larger envelope. But what that is an indication of is the systems approach that Wicca Technologies has taken to this stove. The FlexFire 4 and the FlexFire 6 are an integrated system that allows you to be flexible in the design in, or in terms of how, pe how many pieces you can put together. The FlexFire 4 is a four-sided stove and obviously the FlexFire 6 is a six-sided stove. And that can be accomplished by just adding a couple of components to the FlexFire 4. So we'll be showing that more in depth when we do the review on the FlexFire 6. In addition, there are a good number of accessories that allow you to customize your stove even more. And we'll be showing you some of those accessories in a few minutes time. So let's put the sack aside. Now let's go through the components that come in the FlexFire 4. So of course, like the light fire, the, the front plate is evidenced by the large feed port as well as the FlexFire symbol cut into the lower half of it. This is the back panel and the back panel can be identified by the pictograms on the back very much like the light fire, but there's another means of identifying this and the front plate, in fact, uh, and what differentiates them from the two identical side plates. So we'll put those aside. And of course you have a fire grate. You also receive an ash pan that can be used as a solid fuel plate and two pot stands. So what makes these two plates unique? Well, when I first re uh, received the FlexFire 6 premium system from Wicca Technologies and I opened the package, I was just stunned by the array of plates that I had in front of me. Was I ever going to be able to figure out how quickly or quickly figure out how to put it together? Now the book was amazing. It really helped me very quickly put it together. But then I identified there's two additional symbols on these plates which will help you if you're just picking them up for the first time. So this is the back plate. This is the plate you start your assembly with. So to help identify this, they cut, make sure the camera can focus in on it, right down here where my finger is. They cut an A in the corner down there, A for alpha, meaning this is the plate you start with. And since you end up assembling the stove using the front plate, they have cut an omega symbol. So the omega means the last plate you're going to put on. So let me put that aside. So to assemble the stove, it's very much like the light fire stove. Take the back plate, take the two identical side plates, put them on to the back plate. Like so. Now holding the three plates open, 
take the fire grate, and I'm going to recommend you, you work with the fire grate first, and you'll see why in a second. This is a good time to point out that the sides and the back have three slots for putting plates in. In addition to this higher slot and this lower slot, there's actually a third slot. This large opening here is actually a slot for laying the ash pan in, and I'll show you that in one second. In addition, there's a number of vertical slots which are used for accessories that you can do different things with, and of course, I'll show you that in one second. Now, let's put the fire grate in. Line it up with the tabs up with the slots, which is about the hardest part of this whole job. <laughs> now, I've got the fire grate in place. This is where you put the ash pan in. It makes this a lot easier to do it this way than it does to struggle and try to put them both in the same time. These large windows here are actually slots for the, for the ash pan, and you can work this in without significantly open up the slot the sides and risking dropping the the fire grater because sometimes that'll happen if you try to do everything at once one of the plates is going to fall out in fact you can see the ash pan actually rests loose in that bottom window all right just like the flex fire 4 i have everything assembled now i'm taking my uh, front plate the omega plate lining up the four tabs takes a second to make sure everything's lined up and it drops down into place. The only thing left now are the crossbars. And I'm going to show you more about the crossbars in one second. I think I can come up a little closer for the next portion. All right, so now that we have the stove assembled, let's go over the specifications for the stove. So like the FlexFire 4, this stove is made from a proprietary titanium stainless steel alloy. And what that allows you to do is they've used a thicker metal at 0.8 millimeters uh, thick and retain or have 20% less weight than a, than a true stainless steel uh, stove would have of, of the same thickness. So they've lightened the stove up, but they've given it properties of both the durability of the stainless steel as well as the lighter weight and the the heat management of titanium. So that's the metal. It comes in at one pound, two ounces, or 509 grams. So yes, it is considerably heavier than the flex or the light fire is because there's well, obviously more metal here. The height from the ground to the top of the stove is six and three quarters inches or 17 centimeters. The width is identical to the light fire at three and one half inches or nine centimeters. And the burn chamber depth from the fire grate to the top of the stove is four and three quarters inches or 12 centimeters. Take note of the fact that it has the same width as the flex wire. We'll talk more about that in a minute. Okay, what I want to do is just back the camera up a little bit so that I can start showing you how this stove is used with the variety of fuels. I think this is a good time to bring the light fire back into the picture so you can get a comparison in size between the two of them. I wanted to also show you some of the similarities and some of the differences between the two stoves. So you can see that the Flex Fire 4 is obviously considerably bigger than the Light Fire, and that makes up for when, of course, there's extra metals as well as the extra ash pan plate in this stove. That's where the extra weight does come from. Remember, this is their lightweight. Uh, stripped down version of the stove. So I mentioned a minute ago that they have exactly the same width across and what that allows is allows for exchanging some of the components back and forth. And I don't mean necessarily the sides, but the plates that are used on the inside that I demonstrated in the light fire video can also be used in the Flex 4 uh, stove as well. And I'll be showing you those. But in addition, if you want, if you have either of these stoves and you want to use the pot stands back and forth, you can do that as well. So let's take this out of the picture. Now I'm going to be bringing some other stoves in later in the video to give you a size comparison with a few of those. Let's take that out of the picture. Now, feeding this stove with wood is virtually identical to what it would be with the uh, light fire. You feed it in through the upper window. In this case, you can probably go with slightly longer sticks. So these are six, just over six inches long. You can see, well, the majority of those sticks go in quite well. So you're not gonna have any chance of them falling out as they're consumed. 
but let's leave one of them in. This stick is 10 inches long, and you can see that the, this is probably uh, just bordering on being too long before it starts to want to fall out, but you can probably go 10 inches long. Personally, I'd probably stay in the 70 inch range, cut my sticks down to that, break them down to that. Uh, all right, so I wanted to show you a little bit more about the crossbars. Right now is a good time to do that. So the crossbars are designed so that they have a variety of ways in which they can be used. So like the light fire, you can use them in that crossbar fashion or you can use them in parallel. There are slots in the front plates, back plates, and the side plates that allow you to set this up in parallel. So here it is in parallel position front to back. So you can do the same thing going in the other direction. Now, here's something else about the bars. I can show you one bar. Hopefully it focuses in. The slots cut on the ends are deeper on one side than it is on the top. See that on both ends? That will allow you to decide how deep you want these crossbars to sit on top of the stove. You want to get a little less ventilation clearance at the top or a little more, then you just flip them up side down and do it that way. There are slots cut on the bottom of here and that's for placing on top of the stove. But there's another use for these crossbars which I'll show you in a few minutes time. It doesn't apply too much to the Flex Fire 4, more for the Flex Fire 6, but you'll see what I mean in a minute there. Because of course these are also used on the Flex Fire 6 system. All right, so I have sh demonstrated how this can be set up for wood. I think now what I'll do is I'll show you how it can also be used with other fuels. Okay, I took a moment to reconfigure the stove for use with alcohol because I think after wood, most people will be looking to use alcohol with their stoves as an alternative fuel to wood. So what I did is I took the front plate off, took the ash pan out and the fire grate and I reinstalled the fire grate and that upper set of slots nearer the top of the stove. And this allows me to take a transurea burner, put it in, put the crossbars on and operate it like this. And I like the crossbars going parallel in this case because now there's no metal crossing through the flame acting as a bit of a heat sink and you get uh, a little bit of wind protection actually in doing it this way as well. But now you get the flame contacting the bottom of, of the pot directly. With the stove set up in this position and the trangia, the, the gap from the, from the burner to the pot is one inch exactly. So it could be a little lower. I'd prefer to see it a little lower, but it works perfectly well at the one inch gap. You may have a little slower boil time. You will probably conserve a little bit of fuel, but it, again, it's just not gonna be a speed demon. That's fine with me because when I'm out in the woods, it's not about speed. It's, it's more about uh, just getting my water boiled and I'm perfectly happy with a one inch gap here. Now, like the light fire, if you don't want to, and by the way, I could have just as easily used this plate as opposed to the fire grate in there. It's just, I just picked up the fire grate first. I think the fire grate will allow a little bit more airflow uh, coming up around the stove so that it doesn't, uh, uh, it's not impaired in any way for, for oxygen. Okay, so there is an option that you can purchase from, Flex, or from Wicked Technologies if you want to use it for the Trangia and it's this plate right here. So what I want to do is very quickly, I'll reassemble the stove with the Trangia plate in because it has a benefit over just placing your stove on top of that plate. All right, I've reassembled the stove with the Trangia plate in at the top set of slots and I'll drop the Trangia in. Now, immediately what you can see is the Trangia has dropped into a greater depth. So the depth now, or the pot gap, from the burner to the top of the stove is one and three quarters inches. I really like that. I think that is a near perfect for a quick boil and still a very efficient or fuel efficient burn. You can increase that if you want by putting your crossbars on. In fact, it'll go up to exactly two inches if you put your crossbars on. But with this stove design, I don't think there is any need to put the crossbars on when using alcohol. The stove is very well ventilated around the top. These holes extend around 
all four sides. And of course you have this wide open hole here. I think you're actually a little bit better off for wind protection if you put your pot directly on top of the stove without using the crossbars when using alcohol. So that is one of the greater benefits of having the uh, alcohol plate. Okay, now I've shown you how this will operate with alcohol. Just before we move on to another fuel, I want to show you that there is another option for setting this up with alcohol. It may not be your, your, your first choice, but again, I just want to show you that you can do this. So just give me a second to reassemble the stove. Okay, so what I did this time is I took the alcohol plate out of those top set of slots, and I used the vertical slots to insert through the pot stands through the stove and lock them in and they will hold the Trangia stove in that position as well. Now, there's really no big advantage to doing this because the pot gap distance is the same as it would be if you were setting it on top of the ash pan or the fire grate. You're still at that one inch gap. So not a lot of advantage to doing it this way. I just wanted to point out that you can do it this way. Okay, now we're gonna move on to fuel up solid fuels. All right, I've reassembled the stove using the ash pan to, as a solid fuel plate in the upper slots of the side plates. I've also put the crossbars on, but to be quite honest, I don't think I would use the crossbars with it in this configuration for a couple of reasons. One, is not necessary. Also, this is a one and three quarter, I'm just uh, making sure, sorry, two and a half inch gap between the, the pan and the top of the stove. I don't think I'd want to go any higher than that when using solid fuel. Uh, yeah, so you can use the ash pan for that. You could use the fire grate in that position, but as I mentioned with the light fire stove, if you do that, you would likely want to use some aluminum foil or a little metal cup or plate or something to hold the solid fuel on just so it doesn't uh, drop down through the wide open holes of the fire grate. And I also find that too much oxygen causes solid fuel to burn too quickly and is consumed before you actually get your water to a boil. So that's the way to use this with solid fuel. Now I'm going to reassemble it and we'll show you how it can be used with wood pellets. So I've reconfigured the stove to work with wood pellets, but like the light fire, this is going to require an optional plate to be used because the, the fire grate is obviously the holes are too big and the pellets would fall through. So this is the pellet burning grate and I have put it in the middle position way down here to uh, hold the pellets. Now you could put it at the higher position but to be quite honestly it won't work because those slots up here actually are in line with the hole so you wouldn't be able to hold your pellets in unless you use just a small amount of pellets. So in this I did some testing with wood pellets and I used one cup of wood pellets which burned for a full 30 minutes and two cups of wood pellets which burned for, it wasn't much more than 45 minutes, you would think it'd be double the time but at least in my tests it wasn't. But you can get two cups of pellets in here if you want to for an extended burn time but uh, for most of my needs one cups of pellets are fine uh, being down here. Now I Something I've been doing for the last couple of setups that I haven't been mentioning is I haven't been including the ash pan and that bottom open window set of slots, only for one reason, just for a quick setup. So th that in fact is an option and is entirely up to you. The ash pan is there to protect any surfaces that you're cooking on, be they combustible or just something you don't want to mar up any. But if you leave this plate out, you are saving weight. You just have to be more careful about what you're setting the stove down on. So that is just something to point out. This is not really, for in some cases, an optional plate to use. Okay, I have shown you how to use it with wood, with uh, the trangia, with uh, solid fuel, with wood pellets. Now, one more thing I wanna show you in terms of fuel use is with gas. All right, for this setup, I've reinstalled the trangia plate so that I can use the gas attachment that trangia has. Now, this, again, as I mentioned in the light fire stove, is a copy of the Trangia gas burner made by Boulin, but it is virtually identical and works perfectly for this demonstration. So in order to do that, drop the gas feed through the stove, bring it out through one of the windows on the side, and of course you would attach it to your cylinder here and you have a good amount of distance from the burner to the top of the stove or where the pot would be. Now, I just, uh, in the original video I did for the light fire stove, I had shown it 
these attachments set up at a higher position, way up here on the side of the plates. And it brought the burner very near to the top of the stove and very, very close to the bottom of the pot. And I failed to sh demonstrate, although I did put it on the screen uh, in, in writing, I failed to demonstrate that you can also set the, this gas burner up in the light fire in that lower position where the fire grate normally would set. So that would give you the distance that you're looking for from the bottom of the pot to the top of the burner. Okay, so this is for use with either this uh, copy of the Trangia gas adapter or with the Trangia gas adapter. Having said that, I want to demonstrate for this video, as like I did for the light fire video, that you can also use a bit of a DIY gas adapter. So give me a minute and I'll demonstrate that. So for, for this setup, as I mentioned, I'm going to be using the fire grate because it has that good size center hole. And I'm using a gas burner that was taken uh, from a, another stove that I took apart. And this was one that came from China, very inexpensive. I've mentioned this in other videos. And I'll put a video or at least a picture on the screen of the stove that I took apart or one very similar to it to make this. And what all I have to do now is take the burner apart. Put the center part of the burner or the feed part of the burner through the center hole. Reattach the top half. And I reassemble the stove by putting this in either one of two slots. I can either put it in the lower set of slots or I can put it in the higher set of slots. So I'll do that now. I'll just quickly reassemble this and show you what it looks like. Okay, you can see the feed line coming out of the bottom of the stove and there's the burner way down there. It's got a good amount of distance. We're talking about four inches to the top of the stove. So that's a good amount of distance. It would be about one inch to the top of the stove had I put the plate in the upper set of slots. All right, so that is another option if you want to purchase one of those stoves or if you already have one of those stoves and you just want to convert it for use in a stove like that. Okay, I am going to show you the array of options or accessories that you can purchase for the FlexFire 4. And then I also want to show you a few ways of using the stove that I've come up with that I think are a little less traditional. All right, I've reassembled the stove in its original configuration so I can show you some of the options that are available for the stove. So to begin, when you go to the Wicket Technologies website, and of course I am going to include those links in the show notes below, you'll see that there are two configurations that you can purchase of the FlexFire 4. The basic model is very much exactly what I've demonstrated here, but there is a FlexFire 4 Plus, and it comes with two more options that you can add to the system. So number one, I think is uh, quite a nice option, is this heavy grate. So this is twice the thickness of the metal in the rest of the stove, and this will go on top for grilling. I guess it could be used as a pot stand as well. And there are notches on all four panels that allow this to sit in and sit in securely so it won't slide off. And now you can grill, well, whatever it is you want to grill on top of the stove. So that's a nice accessory to have. That can be purchased separately. It doesn't have to be taken as part of the FlexFire 4 Plus package. The other option that comes with it is this plate. This is a solid Omega plate. So Omega meaning the last one on. So this would replace the feed port plate. And what you would end up with is, well, let me very quickly assemble it and we can, I can demonstrate that to you. There we go. Okay. So I've replaced the Omega plate with the solid version of it. Now, this means that there are no feed ports on any of the sides, and what's the advantage of that? Well, it's intended for use with charcoal because now you'll have a straight cylinder coming up the side, allowing maximum airflow up the side. And when you think about it, look at the design of this stove. I think this is a very much... Uh, leaning towards a chimney style stove over a rocket stove. Now it's, it's a long ways from being a true rocket stove, but the fact that it is at least twice as high as it is wide means you're going to get a very definite chimney effect, drawing air through the bottom and up through the stove. So that's, uh, that's ideal for use with charcoal, but it actually works very well for use with wood or anything else for that matter. So you can replace the, replace the feed plate with the solid plate and you'll get improved performance 
all around. The only thing that it prevents you from doing is feeding sticks in through the side. You still can feed sticks in through the top if you want. So it's not a bad option because it does significantly, as you'll see in our tests, it does significantly improve performance. Okay, so those are the two options that come with the FlexFire 4 Plus, but let me just show you what else you can purchase if you want to add to this system. So I've reassembled the stove with a replacement side plate I'll show you in a second. Now, to be honest, this side plate is probably not going to be something you'll choose to use right away for your FlexFire 4. It is much better and much more effective to use on the FlexFire 6, as you'll see in that video. But what it is, is a side plate with a low feed hole. So now I have a low feed and a high feed. I guess it's not unlike what you might see on the firebox stove where you can feed sticks in from two angles and that's what it's intended for. Now to be quite honest you can use this more effectively on the larger stove. I just wanted to show you the interchangeability of plates that you can uh, you can do with these stoves. All right I'm just going to replace this plate with one the original side plate because I have two more things that I want to show you before we move on. All right so what are the last couple of options that you can purchase for this system. Well, one thing you can purchase is an extra set of crossbars or pot stands. Now, what's the advantage of doing that? Well, there's a couple things you can do with these. You can save these in case, I guess, if you lose one of the originals, it's always good to have uh, options or spares. Uh, this can also be used for moving the stove very much like I showed on the light fire. So you'll remember that there are vertical slots in the two side panels and the back panel. That allows me to take my two pot stands, slide them in, and pick the stove up and move it where I need to. So that's another advantage to using it. Now this one is looks a little awkward when you first look at it, but it does make some sense. What I didn't mention when I first assembled the stove, but very much like the light fire stove, uh, you want to make sure that you, when you're picking the stove up and setting it in place, not when there's a fire in it, of course, that you pick it up from the back or from either of the sides, but not from the front panel. If you do, that front panel is going to come off and the stove is going to fall apart. However, if you have a spare set of these, you can slide them in through the vertical slots on the bottom of the stove. Oh, upside down, sorry. And it will sit in with notches into the notches on the crossbars and that actually locks the bottom half of the stove together so it's less likely to come apart. I suppose it might provide a little bit of tip stability but honestly I don't think that's a great uh, a great advantage of it. The fact that it locks together is uh, is probably the bigger advantage here. Now again this will apply more to the FlexFire 6 than it does to the FlexFire 4. It's just another option that I wanted to demonstrate to you. So we have those crossbars as accessories. And the final thing is the same set of accessory bars that came that I showed with the light fire, and that are these, the pot holders as they refer to them. So again, these are intended for either using with a trangia, like that. And again, I, I, I said it will work, it's just that it's very slow because of all that metal soaking up all the heat. But it does also mean you can use them on top of the stove for supporting larger pots where you're looking for even more airflow uh, through the top of the stove. So it's just another set of options that you can purchase for the stove. Now, one last thing that I want to do while I have the stove in this configuration is uh, when I put it together this time, I left the ash pan off, but I put the fire grate in that bottom slot where the ash pan resides. Now, what's the advantage of that? Well, I guess I add a little bit more depth to the stove so I can get longer sticks further in so that they're all, the same sticks are almost completely inside the stove. But it does also allow me to take sticks that are a little thinner and I can now start feeding them in through the bottom. Now, quite obviously, this is for use on a safe surface that you don't have to worry that is combustible at all. So now I can fit sticks in through those slots on the bottom and, and still have a fire going. Just another option for use of the stove with wood. So the last thing I want to do before we get outside and do some testing with the FlexFire 4 is to bring in a couple of other stoves for comparison. So here's the FlexFire 4. Let's bring in the Bushcraft Essentials Bush Box LF, the smaller of the two folding stoves. So you can see that they are very close in terms of width. The Bush Box LF is a one quarter inch wider. 
So it's just a tiny bit wider, but it is also shorter than the FlexFire 4 is. All right, on the other side, let's bring in the big brother to the LF. This is the Bushcraft Essentials Bushbox XL. So this is the biggest stove in their lineup. There are other of the two folding stoves. You can see it is a tiny bit taller than the uh, FlexFire 4 is, and it's also a little bit wider, so it's just about in between in terms of size. Okay, one more stove I want to bring into the picture, and then we'll move on. I don't think any comparison is complete unless you bring in the Gen 2 5-inch firebox stove. So this is my titanium version of the stove, which I'm still doing testing on. But again, you can see just how close they are in size. Yes, the FlexFire 4 is a little bit smaller and a little bit shorter in, in both directions, but very close, just the same. But it's also much less expensive. And you know, the weight is very comparable. And of course, I'll put that information in the show notes if you're interested. So what is the last thing I need to say before we get outdoors? Well, it has to do with the assembly of the stove. And I think it's important that I point this out now because I'm sure somebody will mention this in the comments section below. They may anyway. And that is, this goes together in a piecemeal fashion. And I know that it looks quite complex in the way that it goes together. Part of that is due because there are so many options, but it is those options that make this such a flexible system. But to be quite honest, the way this stove is designed and the tolerances in the slots on the tabs and everything, the stove goes together very, very easily, much more easily than you might think. In fact, I've used this in cold weather and I've done it with gloves on, so I know just how easy it is to use. I won't mislead you, there is a bit of a learning curve and it does take a bit of practice, but once you get the hang of it, this stove goes together very easily and, and the design, of course, gives you a number of options. Now, let's get outside and do some testing. So once again, I have the Flex Fire 4 set up in my fire pit out here in the wilderness area. A little bit of birch bark I picked up off of the ground, a little piece that I'll light it with. I have a little bundle of sticks right here, just little, again, little pieces of pine mostly that I picked up off of the ground. And then I can progress my way up to a little bit larger and then onto some hardwood for some primary fuel. So let's get this lit. So this stove does lend itself well to a preload if you want to set it up that way. I have not. I just set it up top-down burn just to demonstrate that it can be done that way. Get down in there. And it won't take long for that birch bark. Now the only issue I'm going to have is getting the cross pieces on to put my pot on. It shouldn't be too much of an issue though. There. Because I'll wait till that burns down a little bit before I try that. They'll catch on very quickly. As you can see happening now. And then I'll start dropping in the larger pieces. I have a couple pieces of fat here. Wood here is going to drop in. Why don't throw it in? I seem to have hit a, not a jackpot, but a good quantity of fat wood. I think that's all I need. There's a, a downed Spruce tree. People don't usually think of spruce trees as donors of fatwood or creators of fatwood, but they are. It was down for a lot of years. I, mean, I can pull the stump apart with my bare hands, but then you hit a piece of the stump that's as hard as a rock, and you know that's fatwood. Look at that. And that's where this has come from. I harvested quite a bit out of that stump. There's way too much flame there right now. I'm, to do anything with, so I'll just give it a few seconds to burn down. I'll get the trough pieces on. And a simple demonstration for this one, all I'm going to do is make cowboy coffee. And I know that perked a few people's ears up, because I've been talking about doing that for a while. This is not the video on cowboy coffee, it's Mark's version of cowboy coffee. So stay around for that. All right, do we have a boil? The answer is yes, we do. We have a boil. So what is Mark's version of cowboy coffee? Well, it's not uh, anything special. It starts with boiling water and coffee. And I have about two cups of water in there. So to that two cups, I'm going to put in about four tablespoons. Okay. I'm going to give that a stir.
Cover it over, let it set for a few minutes. Settle the grounds out with a little bit of cold water, just like you would with any other cowboy coffee. And then pour and enjoy. Do you know, of the three stoves from uh, Wicca Technology, the Light Fire, the Flex Fire 4, and the Flex Fire 6, I think it's the Flex Fire 4 that I enjoy using the most. And I think it's because of that in-between size. It's, it's uh, not as big, obviously, as the Flex Fire 6, not as small as the Flex Fire f uh, or the Light Fire is. It's is not as big as a few of the other stoves in this class, but what it has going for it is the ratio of height to width. And what that allows for is a greater chimney effect. It still has a very generous burn chamber. There's still lots of room to put a lot of wood in there, but it's that height that really draws the air up through the bottom and gets a hot fire going fast. Now, it's as not as light or as convenient to use maybe as the light fire is, but it's close, it's very close. It may be not as good at grilling as the Flex Fire 6 is, and when that's only makes sense, right? There's not as much room on the sides, but it, and it doesn't hold the embers or the coals quite as long as the larger stove, and of course that makes sense. But for the ratio of weight to size and the performance of the stove, it just you know, if, if there was, if I had to choose just one, I think I would go with the Flex Fire 4. Uh, not to say that there's anything wrong with the others, they're not. They, they suit a different market. This is the one I'd probably use most often, unless I'm grilling, and then I'd go to the larger one. So, I have had at least a dozen fires in this at this point and I have had no warping. The sides are still as tight as they were when I got the stove. Uh, there is a little bit to the, ash, not the ash pan, but the fire grate, but as I mentioned, flip it over and it, uh, it straightens itself out. It is not as easy to put together as maybe the hinged stoves, but it's not hard either. It, it, uh, it takes a little bit of coordination, not as difficult or is not as difficult, not as challenging as the Flex Fire 6 is. It just takes a little bit of coordination, but I found putting this together, it goes together very easy. The tolerances are cut just right for it to go together. It stays together because it has a good lock up between the pieces. The only trick, as I mentioned before, is make sure you don't pick it up by the front, pick it up by the back or the sides and it won't fall apart on you. The weight ratio to the durability or the thickness of the steel is made possible only by that titanium stainless steel alloy. A lot going for it. Okay. Obviously, there's a lot to like about this stove. I have yet, well, I have used it with pellets a number of times, but I think what I'll do is I'll share you my experience of using this with pellets at a future video. And uh, for today, we'll just leave it as it is. Uh, my coffee's getting cold, so I've got to get to that. But uh, what I want to say is if you have any comments or any questions, put them in the comments section below. I will leave the specifications for the stove and where you can purchase it in the video description. But until next time, Get out and explore, take that path less traveled because it will make all the difference. Bye for now.